Hi guys, welcome back to part two of regression trees. Just to recap really quick, in part one, we learned how the algorithm goes through the feature space and chooses the features that are the most, or the feature that is the most predictive, and then subsequently begins to build the tree and then reiterate that process in uh, using the next subset of data until some kind of stopping criteria is reached and we reach leaf nodes where predictions are actually made. Now we didn't talk about the predictions because our aim in part one was to learn how the splitting, the dividing and conquering strategy uh, is works in these algorithms. Now we're going to kind of take what we uh, concluded with in the part one and actually make some predictions in this very, very simple one noted or one ruled tree. So very quickly, what we learned was that labs was more predictive than tutorials based on the standard deviation reduction being greater than for tutorials. Therefore, we learned that the tree would start growing at the root with labs. And since labs has two levels, we would have two branches. So the tree begins to grow. So let's say, I mean, based on this tiny data set, this tree is not going to grow much bigger anyway. And we don't want to iterate this process again. If you get the basic idea, that is enough. This is definitely something that you leave for the algorithms for basically a computer programming language like Python or R to handle. And there are well-built functions already in place. So we're going to actually move on and just choosing labs as our most predictive feature make this one noted or one rule tree. So what I'm going to do here is actually make predictions and come up with some performance measurement. So let's actually back off a bit. If we didn't use regression trees, and I asked you, just disregard completely the predictor features, or at least the potential predictors, and give me a prediction for an exam score. Let's say a 16th student comes into my class. What do I predict his or her exam score to be? knowing nothing about him or her and only knowing the historical exam scores. Well, you would probably say, rightfully, that maybe we should take the average of all the examples and use that as our prediction. And actually, that would be most often the benchmark to measure our algorithm against. So the most basic thing we can do is to get like a Y bar. So this is, uh, this is going to be, so this is the mean of exam, right? So this is going to be average of all 15 training examples, 45.6. And actually we should have locked this so that I could just drag this down. Okay. So that's a very crude model, right? It is a model though. And uh, what it says is that no matter what you did on the tutorials or what you did on the labs or anything else, any other feature or attribute, the prediction for your final exam is 45.6 based on the average of the training examples. Okay, well, let, we should have a way of measuring how good a prediction that is. And there are a few ways you can go about this. We don't want to spend too much time on all of those, but one very intuitive way is to get the errors and average them. Uh, one thing you could do is square the errors. There's going to be a positive negative problem counteraction, or you can get the absolute value. So what we're going to do here is get the mean absolute error. That's what MAE stands for. Okay. So the mean absolute error, and let me label this for uh, let's say mean model that would be uh, or should, should we say for our null model or base model okay 
So let's do that. So we have the so this actual this student scored a 74. The algorithm would have predicted a 45.6. What's the mean absolute error? Of course, we should be performing this on the test data, but here we're just trying to understand the basic concepts here. So the absolute difference is going to be 74 minus 46. And we put the absolute values. If you forgot what those are, those are those straight up and down pipes. So anything inside there that's positive or negative becomes positive. Drag that down. So these are the absolute errors for each. So let's call these ABS errors. And what we want here is the mean. So average equals average of this column. Let's get rid of some of these decimal places. And so now we have a benchmark. So the mean absolute error for this null or base model using the mean for each prediction is 21.63. Okay, let's hopefully uh, more com complicating things like we talked about the regression tree as one choice for this task of predicting exams will improve this mean absolute error. In other words, reduce it. Let's see if that's the case. All right, so now this brings us back to regression trees. So we decided labs, so let's get the predictions using a very simple one-noted tree or one-ruled tree with labs as the only feature selected. So we're going to say, let's label this a bit, one-node tree using labs. All right, so what is the prediction? Well, here it's not so simple, so it, this depends. So we see here that if you completed the labs, right, then your prediction will be, well, what? Well, how does the regression tree work? Well, the most basic regression tree, and there are more complicated forms of this, like model trees, but the most basic regression tree will take the average of the examples that end up in a particular subset, a terminal leaf. So since this tree is very simple, let me draw it one more time. Labs, and we decided to stop growing this tree right here. It's got two branches, one for completed labs and one for partially completed labs. And then we get to leaves. So this is, this is our tree here. It's very, it's, it's as small a tree as you can get. Okay, uh, so what are the predictions here? So these are leaf nodes. They're terminal nodes, meaning the tree stops there. So it's a leaf. There's not, they're not decision nodes or, or anything else. So what is the prediction here? Well, what the regression tree algorithm will do is it'll look at completed exam scores. So, so sorry, completed labs and it will take all the examples that are completed and so we have we've done this before eight so here are the eight and it will average those exam scores and it will use it will, that will be the prediction here so that will be the number for the prediction there okay now, if you partially completed labs, we'll look at all seven partially completed labs. Here are the scores for, the, uh, for those. It'll give the average here, and those will be the predictions. So basically, this model is just a little more complicated than the base model that we, we, we used as a benchmark in the sense that it discriminates a little between completed and partial labs based on one feature. So it should do better but it's not gonna be the most sophisticated model, of course. That's not what we're after here quite yet. Okay, so how can I get these predictions? Well, I could use Excel again to do some of this work. So first off, let me click back in this pivot table and let me just change this count to average. And that's gonna take care of the calculations that I needed, right? That little tree that I just drew down here where I put the number sign, which I just lost. Well, those are the numbers now. Those are the two numbers in the leaves. That's the average exam score of the completed student, uh, lab students. These guys. 
That's the average. And that's the average for the partially completed. Those are the two predictions. And that's how a machine learning, uh, sorry, that's how a regression tree makes its predictions. When it finally stops growing and it reaches a leaf, it looks at all the examples that reached that particular leaf and it averages or gets to the mean of the target feature, which is numeric, of course, of those examples. So it averages the examples that reach that leaf and that becomes the prediction for any future examples that reach that leaf. So any student that comes in my room, comes through the door with uh, completed labs, and I know they completed the labs, I, can, I could use my more crude model and predict their final exam score, or I can use that information that they completed the labs to predict their exam score. And hopefully this will be a much better prediction than this. Okay, we'll, we'll see. Now, how do I make these predictions here? So again, we're going to pretend that these are our test. These are now test examples, and we're going to make predictions. So this student completed labs. So the prediction should be 65.88. This student partially completed labs. So the prediction should be 22.43, et cetera, et cetera. So how can I automate this? Use some Excel skills while I'm at it. VLOOKUP. So I'm going to look up the value of labs. Where am I going to look it up? In this table. I'm going to hit F4, lock that table. When it finds complete in the first column of my lookup table, I'm going to ask for the third column because that's one, two, third column. That's where the exam average scores are. And then I only want exact matches, which is what false indicates. And as you can see, this student correctly was predict uh, exam scores predicted to be 65.875. Okay, now let's drag this down, and you see that we can spot check. We can see that this student partially completed, so the exam score predicted was 22.43. Algorithms work. Uh, sorry, our, our functions working correctly. Okay, great. Now what we what's left for us to do is to get the mean absolute error for our regression tree. Our, let's, let's be clear, our one node regression tree. So let's do that here. So we're going to get the error in the same exact fashion, the absolute error. Here's the actual exam score for this student. Here is the predicted exam score using our simple regression tree. There is the absolute difference between those two numbers. Obviously, you would wish that number to be smaller. Clearly, you see this one is much smaller than the base model. Let's drag that down and let's average these. And that will be our mean absolute error. So equals average. Enter, and we see that yes, our very simple regression tree significantly reduced the mean absolute error from the null or base model or notion of just using the average as a prediction. So basically, knowing whether a student completed a lab or only partially completed labs helps us significantly to predict how well they're going to do on an exam, as evidenced by the mean absolute error reducing by, from 22 almost to about 9. So that's more than uh, a 50% reduction. Okay, So this, these fundamental concepts that I went over in part 1 of how the tree chooses the splits, how it divides and conquers and grows, all the way to now the end of the process, which is now that you have a tree, you've stopped growing, how do you use it to make predictions, comprises the basics and fundamentals of regression trees. Now, you wouldn't, you wouldn't do the regression trees with Excel, especially not the way I'm doing it here. But it again, the purpose here was to make something as simple as possible, but not too simple, to illustrate the fundamental concepts of what 
the classification and specifically regression tree algorithm does in uh, behind the scenes when you use it in, in a package like R or Python where you don't really get to see what's going on even though there are already well-written functions and routines to do all of this on giant data sets with tons of features and, and hundreds of thousands if not millions of examples the fundamentals are the same so I hope this was helpful be sure to watch the rest of my tutorials on my channel. I have a whole playlist and series on other machine learning algorithms and actually how to do this with R, for example, how to take this live into a much more realistic scenario using a much more powerful tool oriented for this task. So subscribe, like, share, comment. Until next time, have a great day.